It's not only affected my running in this shoe, but also other shoes. So it's affected what other shoes I can run in. So the scores are in, and I've got a real love-hate relationship with this shoe. So this is the full review of the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Flash 2. It's the up-tempo trainer, and it's the, the training partner for the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. But before we get into it, if you want to support the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So in our quick specs, as you can see, they're pretty light package. So 245 grams or 8.6 ounces in a men's size nine. Really nice light weight here for a training shoe. Now price wise, not too bad for a super trainer. $280 in Australia, $170 in the US. Now for our stack heights, as you can see there, 35 and 34 and a half, giving us a 0.5 mil drop. But if you've seen my other reviews uh, about this shoe, that absolutely means nothing in this shoe. It's because it's got this crazy geometry. Now in our scores, I'm pretty happy about the weight here. I love it within that eight ounces mark, especially for a training shoe, eight out of 10. Uh, and in the price, I'd love to see it a little cheaper. So I'd love to see it around that Saucony Endorphin speed price, seven out of 10. And in the upper, we have got a very light engineered mesh. So this mesh is one of the most breathable shoes that I have tested recently. So really nice and breathable, very light and airy. Uh, padding wise, it's, a, it's slimmed down, so there's not much padding in this shoe. It's very similar to what you would find in the upper of the Wave Rebellion Pro 1. So there's a tiny bit of padding here around the heel collar, but nothing much. There is no padding on the tongue. It is paper thin. Uh, the tongue is not gusseted. Uh, heel counter wise, we've got a pretty structured heel counter here. And as you can see in the heel, we've got no heel flare or no padding uh, within the shoe. But you can see uh, of the angle of this, uh, where the heel is, this thing here is pushing against my Achilles and it is causing some significant irritation. So bad blisters I'm getting with this. I can't shake it off no matter what I put on my Achilles to cover it up it's still not working. Uh, the lockdown in this shoe is pretty good, so no heel slippage. The fit though, the fit is tight, so it is a race fit. So in the length, for me, it's true to size. However, width-wise, it's quite a thin shoe and it really hugs your shoe. If you've got a wide foot, you may wanna consider coming half a size up, but then it may be just a bit too long. So it's a bit of a tricky one here with the fit. It's best to go into the store and try this one on. Overall comfort of the upper, obviously I've had dramas, what I've just said about the heel thing, but the rest of the shoe is not too bad. It's just going to be tight for some people. I definitely haven't got along with this upper. That's why it's getting six out of 10. And in our midsole, we have got a dual density midsole. So for the top layer, they're using their premium super foam. That is the Mizuno Energy Light Plus. That's the one that they use in the race shoes. So the Wave Rebellion Pro 1 and 2. Really responsive, soft and bouncy foam. Under that, they've got a glass fiber infused wave plate. So it feels like plastic to me or nylon, but it does give the shoe a little bit of rigidity, but it's still got some flex in it. So it's not as stiff as a carbon plate. Uh, and the bottom layer of foam, it looks to me like it is a EVA blend foam. Uh, so that one over here, so some people have found that stiff. Uh, however, over here in Australia, I found it soft. So for me, it's still pretty soft and nice and cushy. So that's gonna obviously add some durability to the midsole. Uh, and in our geometry, it has got uh, the same DNA or it's sharing the geometry of its training partner, the Pro 2. So we've got a really aggressive rocker here up against the front and we've got a bit of a heel bevel as well. But um, the rocker in this is not as aggressive as what you're gonna find in those race day shoes. And the ride, well, it's really, really nice. So these foams combined with the geometry and this plate just makes it for a really easy running shoe. Easy to lock into the paces, easy to tick the legs over. Uh, you feel bouncy, you feel uh, responsive, but it's not overly aggressive. So it's got vibes of the Wave Rebellion Pro 1, but just not as aggressive. Very versatile shoe. It's really happy just to jog around in as well. It probably takes a few k's to get used to it to find out where the rocker is and where this sweet spot is. But once you hit hit the nice spot, once you find out where uh, this shoe is really working for you, it just ticks the legs over effortlessly. It is a really enjoyable ride. So for me, this ride is 
almost up there with my favorite. So especially within that training shoe or that super trainer category. So yeah, I find this one more fun than the Super Blast and the Boston. So it's just got more pop, it's got more roll forward. So yeah, really love the ride. Great school here, eight and a half out of 10. Right, and in our outsole, we have got blown rubber. So that's where as you can see there, all that red stuff is the blown rubber and the white stuff there is just a little bit of exposed foam. We've got a huge cavity through the middle of the shoe, very similar what you're gonna find in the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. And we've got that exposed uh, wave plate there, but grip wise, so in the dry, nice as most shoes are. Uh, in the wet, the, on a wet, greasy road this thing feels like an ice skate so super super slippery uh, on a bitumen road it's not too bad on a wet footpath but yeah on a bitumen road this thing uh, is no good at all durability wise it looks fine so minimal wear signs but my running in this one has been limited and that's just because it's just been so uncomfortable with the upper so best shoes for the Flash too. So it's a very versatile shoe. As I said before, feels fine just to jog in, but it's happy place is that about that tempo. So that up tempo stuff, that tempo pace stuff. So not quite race pace, just that middle pace where you are working. Uh, would I use it for a threshold or a race? I personally wouldn't do it. I'd rather a carbon plated race shoe, but uh, if you enjoy the shoe that much, then this one, you could use this one for racing as well. It certainly feels uh, propulsive enough. It certainly feels rocket enough uh, to handle that sort of stuff. But very versatile. Long runs, yet yeah, effortlessly you'll roll through your long run if you can get along with the upper. And this shoe is not going to work for those people with a wide foot. So the fit of this shoe, super skinny, super tight. Um, if you've got a wide foot, you're going to have to size up, but then the shoe, I think, is going to be too long for you. And if you need a, a fair bit of stability in your shoes, I'd steer clear of this one as well. And it's also not to be used as a all-day shoe. So this one's not made for walking around in at all. This is primarily for your running. So some similar shoes out there or some competition for the Flash 2 for you to consider. So first thing that comes to mind is the Adidas Boston 12. So again, they use the dual density foam. They've got a, a super foam mixed with an EVA blend and some carbon infused rods. It's not as rocket as this shoe. Uh, and this shoe certainly feels more bouncy. Uh, and I'm also gonna mention the Puma DV8 Nitro 2 and hopefully the three. So that one again, they use the dual density foam with a super foam and a bit of a plate. The geometry in the Puma is very traditional and not as rocket as this one, but it's a nice, lively, energetic ride. Uh, and last of all, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 and hopefully the four. So that one again, nylon plate, they use uh, that good super foam and it's a very versatile shoe. So overall, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I love hate relationship with this shoe. Absolutely love the ride, love the bounce, the propulsion, love the rocker, love the the super foam. I just just love everything about this ride. And it's just that upper that has killed all my experience for this shoe. So that digging in on the Achilles has just it's not only affected my running in this shoe, but also other shoes. So it's affected what other shoes I can run in. Uh, yeah, it's just really chewed the back of my Achilles up and yeah, I just can't run in this thing anymore Which is very very disappointing, but that's just me you may get on with this upper so obviously my time affected by the rubbing of the upper and that is reflected in the score there, but Other scores aren't too bad. So hopefully this upper is going to work for you. But anyway guys that is it from me uh, any questions you've got about the flash or how it relates to anything else, especially those similar shoes that I've mentioned before, just drop them in the comments below. Love reading those and love getting back to those. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.